Cotney Attorneys and Consultants is dedicated to helping the construction industry with legal, business, and safety challenges. Welcome to this week's episode of Law and Mortar with John Kenny and Trent Cotney. I'd like to welcome everybody to another episode of Law and Mortar. I am Trent Cotney, CEO of Cotney Attorneys and Consultants. And as always, I've got John Kenny, CEO of Cotney Consulting Group. John, how are you doing? Doing great. It's uh, been a very, very busy week, and I certainly am glad to be here and hope everybody out there has had a great one as well. So this has been an extraordinarily busy week for both of us. Uh, I think I had six webinars this week. I'm, I lost track after four. Um, the big topic of discussion is still uh, material shortages and uh, material price increases. Uh, and in some of the webinars I had, there were manufacturers present. So I had conversations both, you know, uh, during the webinar and after um, about you know, the necessity for us to kind of figure out how to work together and, and what can we do to kind of bridge the gap for purposes of, of trying to make this work. So uh, all the conversations that I've had, and John, you could probably talk the same thing, but you know, regardless of where it is in the food chain, this is one of the few occasions where I see contractors, distribution, and manufacturers laying it all out on the table and really working together. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, what's real interesting, and I know I've talked to some contractors in Chicago, I, I see even competitors working together. You know, it's it's there's a lot of horse trading and and you know bartering you know i'll trade you this much for you know th this many fasteners for this plywood and so on and so forth because they can't find the materials otherwise so very unique time in our industry what are you hearing on your end same exact thing and that's great uh, you brought up the point about bartering i mean it happens i mean and i'm seeing it too and i'm encouraging it that's kind of the way it was back in the uh you know, a couple of decades ago where, you know, roofers, you got something left over, you didn't try to return it for credit, you traded it off and got something you needed. But I think now it's gone from, okay, we can do that to it's really a necessity. If you got a, a you know, a cohort in the roofing industry that has extra six inch screws that they're not going to use and, but you have something they need, now is the greatest time in the world to turn that inventory around. So I'm seeing that too. And I agree with you, the partnership, and we're actually on the consulting side with our clients, we're promoting that partnership to get with your manufacturers, get with your vendors. They're all in the same boat. Believe me, they, if they could produce the material, they absolutely would because their entire business model is based on getting material out the door and into market. So everyone's hands are tied now. It's, it's a bad situation. Yeah, you know, where usually there might be a little bit of an adversarial relationship there. I, I really see this as an opportunity to um, maybe reconsider, you know, and, and think about after this is over, you know, how can we continue to solidify the industry moving forward? I, I, I've said it repeatedly in the webinars, but, you know, happy customer, happy contractor, happy contractor, happy distributor, happy distributor, happy manufacturer. So it, it's, it's really a top-down kind of thing. And I think this is interesting from a lot of different standpoints along those lines, you know, a lot of people are, are uh, pointing the finger at COVID. And I think John, what you and I realized is it's not just COVID there's, you know, a myriad of reasons that have caused, um, you know, the, the problems that we're facing now. One of the things that I want to focus on though, is, um, you know, the just in time inventory process and our heavy reliance on the existing and to be frank, somewhat outdated shipping uh, that we've got, regardless of whether it's, you know, ships carrying the stuff overseas or it's railroads or it's trucking. Um, a lot of our infrastructure is outdated. A lot of the, the means and methods that are normally used to, uh, you know, truck freight and things of that nature are outdated. And I'm curious to kind of see what you think the future might look like. Um, you know, I, I've, I've talked about it before how I, I do think that that um, this situation, you know, when you look at it, just kind of taking a step back, you've got COVID, right? We had that for a year, we're still in it. Now you've got this issue. And this this is the 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 um, 
fertilizer for technology, right? This is this is what they need in order to grow. So there, um, innovation always occurs when there is is uh, a significant demand and supply can't meet up. So I'm curious, kind of what your thoughts are. You know, where do you see after this is this crisis is over? How do you think shipping will change? That's a great question. I, I just want to tag back on what you said about the COVID. COVID was is get blamed for a lot of things, but when you look at this, and that's where we'll jump into where we're going to go in the future, if you look into this from a big standpoint, it's just like your personal health, right? Our industry's been sick for a long time. When I mean our industry, all construction, shipping, we've had a shortage of trucks for many years, a shortage of this, a shortage of that, you know, the inventory practices and the contractors buying practices and the general contractors buying practices last minute, get the best price, right? It's all, and now COVID's like a, a major health event that brought all the other sickness to the top. And that's really all it is. It's just an event that catalysted. So that being said, I really like the future out there for technologies, a lot of things. Um, I know like in the, the basics of it, there's going to definitely be a lot of drone deliveries. I don't necessarily think you're going to see a drone leave New York City and drive material and fly it all the way out to LA for, you know, I, I, you know, big bulks. I'm not sure we're there, but definitely there's going to be a drop off point regionally near where your job sites are. And I think there you're going to see the drones take it from that point further. Um, I think some of the things not really being looked at, the driverless part of the industry, um, it's not just about getting in your car and you don't have to drive. You're starting to see the taxi services come out with it. They are experimenting with trucks. I think you're going to see an X amount of driverless um, transportation that's going to take it from a point A to a point B. Maybe not quite over the road at the point, but you're going to see that. Another interesting one is this uh, the magnetic rails that they're coming out with and the magnetic technology to drive the trains here. I know here in Florida, they're actually working on having something in Tampa and St. Pete that they're trying to get funding for. It'll be like a magnetic rail that can go X hundred miles an hour. So yes, that's transportation, but you know darn well if they get that done, what's going to come next? A tube to shoot material through from point A to point B that no one has to worry about. So I think that's where you're going to see technology. It's going to be driven. It may not be super dramatically changed, but driverless technology, drone, different rail technology, it's got to be taking the human out of it. It's got to be because there's no other solution for it now. And I think if you look at all your technologies, Trent, you, you see, you follow this as much as I do. That's where the technology is hitting, taking the human part out of it. That's how I see it. Yeah, and I also think logistically what you're going to start seeing is distribution have a larger focus on regional and localized uh, distribution centers, similar to what we're seeing with Amazon. Um, it, it is, I also think that, I don't think the just-in-time inventory process will reverse, but I do think that manufacturers are now going to start having a lot more source material on hand so they don't end up in a situation like they are now. Um, yeah, it, it is going to change a lot of things. Very interesting. You know, um, it, it, it would be hard to really predict the gravity of this situation and the extent of it, uh, but it is affecting every, every corner of the globe and uh, definitely in our industry throughout. So, yeah, I'll, you know, tagging on to that, that's a great point, thinking about it in another way. I really think that I will be shocked if I don't start seeing in the next five years where you're not going to be able to buy 10 different thicknesses of insulation. Because of that reason, I think you're going to be limited in choices so that they only have to make so many to keep up with the stock. You may see that right now. I know that is what's happening. They basically shut down a lot of the sizes and saying this is what you can get. But I think that those are the types of things other than what we talked about you're going to see. You're going to probably, maybe you're not going to get quarter, half, 55, 16, all those sizes, or you're not going to get inch and a half, 1.7, 1.8 ISO, stuff like that. You may only have a choice between inch and a half, three inch and combos, who knows, but I'm sure somebody in the manufacturing world is working on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is, um, you know, I'm sure we'll be putting out a lot of content, you know, written video and otherwise, but it's going to be, uh, I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Um, I'm focused on fall. That's that's what I'm the most curious about. 
yep. uh, after some of these big storms kind of go through, what what does it look like? What is the impact? What are the shortages? Um, that's that's kind of what you know from a academic standpoint. I'm interested in in seeing what it looks like then. So, um, John, I want to turn, I guess, briefly towards you know some stuff that we've got coming up. Um, you and I have been planning a lot of our our trade shows uh, and events that we're doing. I'm going to be heading up to Chicago for NRCA's um, you know summer board meetings here in a couple of weeks. Um, and then after that, we've got uh, FRSA coming up in Orlando uh, towards the end of July. What are you looking forward to there? Well, uh, for, for us, it's definitely our first large um, gathering live event uh, situation. Um, I, I'm hearing it's going to be well, uh, well attended. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm really, from the uh, studying the people mode and see how things go, I don't know how it's going to be because this really is the first time the you know regionally the roofing industry's gotten together and you know how long so it should be interesting to see how people react and interact and what's new happening out there but I and honestly I am looking forward to getting a little one on one it's uh, it'll be nice to see people again it'll be nice to hear what's going on and um I I'm looking forward to it so I think it should be interesting Yep, same here. You know, it's it's been a while since I've seen a lot of our friends in the industry. It's going to be good to uh, to see what things are like. I'm curious. This is the first big outing. It's really the first big event, uh, sizable event. I know our cats having one this week. It looked like there was good attendance there. Um, but uh, being you know, given its size, I'm very curious to see what it looks like. So be looking forward to seeing my friends there, and it's going to be good. And then shortly after that, we've got IRE and. Western states and a bunch of other things that we'll be attending. So it's a busy uh, fall. Yeah, yeah. And if you, for our listeners, if you're on the road and you're out and about, stop by and say hi. More than likely, we've got a booth or we're speaking or something. We uh, definitely like uh, talking to people that, that listen to us. So, um, John, as always, I'd like to end with a, uh, a question. question here. All right. Yep. And I've got a ton. Um, so let me see what I can find here. I, I got to get you a good one. Mm. I'm sure there's one in there. Okay. Okay, here's one. This was from a while back. This is actually from uh, end of year last year, and I'm just now getting to it. Um, but what I try to do is mix stuff up based on what we're talking to, talking about. So this one is from Nico, and Nico is wondering... Uh, if you have any suggestions with regard to dealing with suppliers and distributors, especially if you're forming a new relationship. So Nico's question is relatively long, but from what I gather, he is just now entering into the business. Uh, he doesn't have a pre-established, um, you know, uh, relationship with a supplier. Uh, I'm kind of reading between the lines, but he was probably, you know, going to your Home Depot or Lowe's. And now he's gotten large enough to where he's trying to establish that credit account with a supplier. So any words of wisdom that you might have for him? Yeah, I mean, I think relationship selling and relationship buying are two of the most important things for anybody that's in the industry or, or someone looking to do what, he, what he's doing. Um, what I mean by that is definitely now is not the time to try to open up accounts in all different supply. It never is the time. You want to, you know, you want to kind of go through that interview process, you know, talk to them. They're going to talk to you. You're, it's it's kind of like, a, you know, online dating, right? Or dating. You got to get to know you're partnering with this uh, distributor. They want to partner with you. So it needs to be a fit. And if you get that, you know, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to let them know what you expect. And, you know, and, and also once you start to get in this relationship, hold a monthly meeting. You know, it's important to whoever your account manager is inside or outside to talk to them, to let them know, hey, I am satisfied with what's going on, or I'm not quite satisfied. Could we see if we could try something different this way? And they'll do the same with you. You know, they might say, hey, every time I come and make a delivery, um, you know, you, you want to ask that question. How are we on our side? Well, you're awful. Every time we come to get a delivery, your foreman's never on the job, even though they say they're there. And, and, and this may not be the case, but I'm giving you just some examples. You want that open communication and build that solid relationship. It's not always, and I know this is especially now, but at any given time, please don't base your relationship strictly on pricing. There's more to success in this industry 
than saving a dollar or 50 cents on something. It's sometimes getting it there when you need it, knowing you can get it, knowing they're going to stand behind you as well as you stand behind them goes a long way to being successful. Yeah, and I think along those lines, I'd, I'd probably have three quick points I'd make. And, you know, one would be um, get to know people other than just your salesperson. Um, the reason I say that is, you know, there's movement within the industry. So whoever you're dealing with today may not be there tomorrow. You want to go up the ranks and make a lot of different contacts so that if you need some help, you can get it. The second thing I would say is beware of gifts. So, uh, you know, the trips to Cabo are nice, but I'd take 2% back at the end of the year any day over a trip to Cabo. Um, so a lot of that is negotiation, you know, that, that gets further along in your relationship. Uh, you really don't have the capacity or the power to do that at the onset, uh, but keep that in mind. Third thing I would say is read your credit app. Read your credit app. Avoid personal guarantees if you can. Um, read it very closely. There's, I've had a lot of questions recently. Oh, I got this price quote that says this. Quote is a quote and an estimate is an estimate. You know, it doesn't count until you purchase it. So read your credit application closely. Don't be afraid to ask questions or seek changes but also recognize what your negotiating capability is. You know, Trent, I want to just tag one more thing. Credit app was a great, uh, great aspect to bring up. So this is going to sound strange to a lot of people, but I always did this and I recommend you do it. Get to know the credit manager at the local branch you're working with. Okay, you're going to be like, why? Because they're going to know you as a human being. They're going to know you as a person. You're going to know them as a person and a human being, right? Why would you need to do that? There may come a time where you need an extended term on a particular project because of the way the project is that you, your salesman may not be able to get that for you because the credit manager is going to say, well, who's this? I don't know them, but I'm telling you, it pays off. I've done that and had those work that out over the years, maybe a little extra rebate on one of the projects or get an extension of payment terms. Know your credit manager will pay off aces at the end. Yep, definitely a good point. You know, it is construction, regardless of how big it is or how technologically driven it is. At the end of the day, it's still relationships. Relationship yep. building is always important. So don't forget that. Get to know people along the, the uh, management chain, get to know other people within distribution and your manufacturers, and you never know when at some point you might need them. So John, with that, we have talked about a lot today. Um, yep. You know, I want to let our listeners know, please keep sending in your questions. We promise I'll get to them all. Uh, you can always hit me up at Trent Cotney, T Cotney at CotneyCL.com. John, how can they get you? That's Jay Kenny at CotneyCL.com. Great. Well, stay tuned next week and we will make sure to have some timely topics for you on Law and Mortar. See you then.